Friggin' what up, dude? Um, Strider Wilson, I'm the host of this podcast that's mine. It's gonna be called History is Nice. History is Friggin' what up, dude? Welcome back to another ep of History is Dank. Dude, I'm your host, Strider Wilson, dude. We got Aaron going beast mode on the sticks like he does, dude. What up, Aaron, dude? What up? Chillin', dude. We got an extra special motherfucking treat today on this episode, dude. We got two legends, two hilarious bros via Friday beers, via Almost Friday TV Welcome to the studio, Liam Culla and Will Angus, dude. Dude, thanks, thanks for having man. us, Strider. Oh, are you kidding me, dude? We've been talking about this for a while. Yeah. We have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We bonded. Dude, I think this goes back to like South by Southwest two years ago where we're like, dude, fucking Archduke Ferdinand. Dude. Like, this was, a lot of times bros will bond over different things, mm-hmm. maybe stats of a game, cities they're from. We might come from a um, more niche ilk of bro where we bond over historical facts mm-hmm. oh dude you remember oh did you see dunkirk oh how many times <laughs> oh um do you remember uh we talked about archduke ferdinand you guys had fire knowledge mm-hmm. we're going a different route with today's topic but um before we get into it i mean is there anything sick you guys want to say about archduke ferdinand or or um the world war one or any of that because we were bonding over it yeah we were because i remember when i first learned of this podcast listened to an episode i was like that's what i would talk about yeah, yes. probably before we even met, I was like, that would I would come with that because I think it's the greatest example for time travel being real, mm-hmm. dude. Yeah, the, 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 that's the, an interesting. So the twists perfect. and turns yeah. that happen. Like how many times he failed killing this guy? What's his name? Gavrilo Princip or yeah. whatever the yeah, guy yeah. Who killed him. Yes. How many times he failed and over then, and over? And then the luck that he gets yes. of just posting up and also just Sandwich having Trump grenades, or... just being like, <laughs> yeah, dude. Just cruising around with grenades. Yeah. I didn't even know they had grenades, honestly, back then. Neither did until I. Until I learned about the story. Yeah. It's a fascinating story. And you know what actually did a decent job with it was, um, what's that movie that's not that great? It was the sequel. Technically, they did a... Pr- oh, they you're did talking a, about uh, Kingsman, right? Kingsman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of fun movies. Fun movies. First one was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Second yeah. one, pretty good. And then I think they did a third one where with Rasputin and shit. That was the one. Okay, so the third one is what mm-hmm. where they do delve into World War One, and it's like the whole origin of the Kingsman. Yeah, I was nah. into it. I did. I actually didn't watch it, but um, I knew what you were talking about. Have yeah. you done an episode on Rasputin? No, dude. Okay, no. so we so we have two more reasons to return that. Yes. We got to yeah. do one on Archduke. The story of Rasputin's death is insane okay we got to come back and we got to come back i'm already getting horny for that <laughs> guys we can too. stay stuff like horny we can stay stuff like fuck oh on okay. here so nice. whatever you want to do i got blood traveling downstairs at mach Ooh, 7 that's what i'm talking <laughs> <laughs> the g-force going into angus's shorts okay we talked about your handles a little bit before the pot handle aka name mm-hmm. will is your first name but angus is such a fire name it, dude it, it is a strong name yeah it's a strong name and everyone i think when i was in um middle school everyone called each other by their last names when we all met in fifth grade yeah and uh it just it stuck with me forever it's and, a great um, name to give you got a strong middle name as well yeah what is that holgate amazing yeah you kidding me if i was a lawyer william holgate oh wilhelm holgate yeah dude when jacoby sues myers i'm coming (laughs) to see you baby no question that's amazing and liam dude i mean i love that dude irish or scottish what are we talking irish full irish yeah yeah i love that grandfather's right off the boat best character in in braveheart i mean you know we can bond over braveheart for days but the guy fucking steven it's my island i mean (laughs) for days for days i love that guy i gotta rewatch that soon because i haven't seen that since i was probably in middle school and i enjoyed it and appreciated it then but i think i i think the funniest part of that movie is when (laughs) it's like uh Mel Gibson is sprinting back to warn people or like they're trapping this guy and he's running at the speed of a horse essentially barefoot. Yeah. Like he's just going full tilt. <laughs> he's almost as fast as a horse. It's the funniest thing I've seen in the movie. Dude, I was about Dude. to fully lie to y'all. I've never seen it. Wait, was, you've never I seen it? I was about it? to just be like, yeah, we could talk about it forever. But I, You've I, never I, seen Braveheart? I don't, I don't know how. 
It's phenomenal. I know Dude, it is. It is a three hour investment, but I like, bro, I, come on. No, it's one of those movies. Get COVID, where I'm like, watch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come on. I'm, I'm going to watch it one day. I just like, I don't know. It's one of those movies that keeps falling through the cracks for me. Bro, I hear you. You know what I mean? It's like a Gladiator <sighs> yes. is my go to Sunday. I have horrible anxiety watch because then I'm like, oh, I'm a, I'm a champion. Braveheart, same vibe. Mm-hmm. If you're ever just feeling down on a Sunday, Throw that on, you're yeah. ready for Monday. You've been getting after it with your boys Saturday night. You, you, you haven't slept. you got the Sunday scaries, as they say. You throw on a movie like Shawshank. You watch it on TNT with commercials. Yes. You pull it on a movie <laughs> like, uh, you know, immediately you're invested in Saving Private Ryan. Braveheart, it's going to get you to the promise. And it will take for all day to watch. Mm-hmm. If you watch it on network television, it will take eight hours. <laughs> it's eight hours. <laughs> it really it takes is. eight hours. Yeah. yeah. See The Patriot as well. Have you seen The Patriot? Oh. Uh, is that the Mel, Mel Gibson? Gibson. Again. No, yeah, bro, no, he's haven't. beasting. Fuck, I, I dude, I think the first time I heard about Mel Gibson was when he got like canceled. Oh, he had a sick uh, run when I, was, when I was a child. <laughs> Before that, he was a beast, bro. He directed and acted in Braveheart. He was right. fucking Mad Max, fucking Lethal Weapon. Signs. Yeah, he was like the man. Signs. Signs really cool. one of my favorite movies. He could be funny and also a good action guy, also a heartthrob. He still can. Signs is funny. He, he, he still can. He can yeah. still be he still can overcome I think, I think yeah. he's doing I think he's coming again. back now. Yeah. But yeah, he had a rant that wasn't good. No. <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> said, he shared some opinions that were that were very bad. Not good ones. Yeah, he had some very bad opinions, dude. Um, what you guys, dude, speaking of perspective and point of view, are, I would say, dare I say, crushing it, dude, with... Um, uh, share with our listeners, your guys, and I'm interested to learn this as well, sort of your come up, and maybe it's it's different. Maybe you met at Friday Beers. I don't know if they brought you together or you guys were boys before then. You seem like great friends now, which I think is important for comedy and sketch comedy and, and creating the gel that's needed for group performance. But, um, yeah, where did you guys come up, and, and how did you get into comedy? What uh, Babbel is the language learning app that sold you more than 10 million subscriptions Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, there's still time to learn a new language before you reach your destination. Dude, <clears throat> I'm learning Polish right now and I'm fired up on it, dude. You know I want to cruise to freaking Poland, dude. I've got Polish heritage. I'm talking to my boy Tomek at the food truck, dude. I'm fired up on learning it and Babbel is helping me develop those skills in a fun, easy, quick way. So right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash dank. That's babbel.com slash dank for up to 55% off your subscription. Do big shout out to the good people at Anchor Brewing Company in San Francisco, dude. They've been working hard for 127 years to bring you the best beer in the world. Anchor workers are in the negotiation on their second union contract, and they would love your support. So if you're a fan of great beer and workers' rights, which I am, Reach out to at Anchor Brewing on social media and let them know you stand with the workers by using hashtags, hashtag Anchor Union and hashtag Anchored in SF. For updates, you can follow them on social media platforms at at Anchor Union SF. Together, we can make sure that the people who bring you your favorite beer are treated fairly. Well, uh, my story is not that interesting. Really, I just like graduated into COVID. Oh, what and a then bust. like I couldn't find a job, which I, honestly I was like at first I was like this is awesome. I I have no reason to look for a job. It's nice. I kind of felt like the responsibility melt away, and then that kept happening for like a year because I thought mm-hmm. it was gonna be like mm-hmm. three month break, mm-hmm. and so I started making videos and just putting them on TikTok and Instagram, and then um, they started doing pretty well. Friday beers had a conversation with them, flew out and met Liam. Oh wow! In L. A. You guys seem like old friends. That's that's a surprise. That's to me. what we're told. We, we get I that think a lot. In a yeah. way, we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah, you guys vibe. Yeah, you are. You kindred spirits. Yeah. Amen. Okay, so that's amazing, dude. You you did you in college or anything? Did you do improv or like did you do sketch writing or no? Where I, did you get this? Where was the where did the impulse come for you to say, I've got this point of view. I want to put it on the web. Um, I don't really know. I mean, honestly, like. It really is a boring story. Like, just my high school was so boring. I went to like a all boys middle school. Whoa! In high school, whoa! And there was like forty of us per grade. What a bus! And all the walls were gray. The carpet was gray. The teachers were priests. <laughs> and like, I think that like we just had to joke with each other because we were so bored all day, mm-hmm. bored to death, literally. And 
that's where it came from was just like making each other laugh and then yeah. i guess it just translated well i got kind of lucky i love that and you know what that does translate well to a time where you mentioned covid where you're where are you you're in your room you're surrounded by your four mm-hmm. walls posting up your probably your parents house if you're like me when you graduated college i moved directly back home with my mom what up dude Legit. <laughs> fucking dank lasagna and <laughs> You, you were sort of equipped for that mm-hmm. pandemic and to thrive. So that is that is a very interesting thing to say. I mean, it feels uninteresting on the surface level, but if you dive in, mm-hmm. you were built for that, dude. Mm-hmm. And now you're thriving, dude. Yeah. Uh, Liam, what's your story? I really liked sketch comedy since I was a wee lad. Love it, yeah. Got real into Lonely Island, like right when they were posting shit. Oh yeah, bro. Oh you, really? So yeah. you saw that? I didn't even know about them till SNL. So you knew them. And that's my like. I like saying that to people because yeah. it's true. I I knew them before SNL. They were still big. Their videos were still getting a ton of views. Was it YouTube that they were doing, or did you, they have their own website? Yeah, they were YouTube. I okay. think at the time. Like it was Good Neighbor and Lonely Island. Yeah. No, yeah. But I didn't even know. Like I, they were the only sketch group I was aware of for a while. Okay. And then in high school. I started making sketches with my just my friend Zach Valencia, Chris O'Neill, Matt Sepich, good dudes. Oh, dude. Uh, Zach Valencia is still a great comic. He he stayed on board of the comedy game. Everyone else is living a normal, beautiful life. Good for that. Uh, Heroes. Yeah, we called ourselves Knee Squad in high school. That was our sketch group name because all of us were except for Chris. Chris was pretty good. We yeah. were bad at high school football. And so we just knee during practice on the sidelines. Amazing. And so we call ourselves the knee squad at practice because <laughs> we just chop it up. It was a great time. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. And then in college, I uh, kept just making sketches. Uh, and then luckily, Zach Valencia transferred to UMass. So then we had a back, the dynamic was back. So we kept making, and they were terrible. Everything we made was really bad. Of I look, course. I hope nobody, don't look it up, don't try to find it. It's going to come back to get me one day. I know. Mm-hmm. I know. Uh, and so I was doing that in college. And then one of them finally just popped off a little bit and uh, Max Barrett from Friday Beer saw it. And then there you go. flew me and Will out the same weekend. I'd never met him. We stayed at the Hotel Irwin together in the mm-hmm. same room. I bonded. think they put you up in the same room. Yeah. Very bold. Mm-hmm. Very bold of, of the Friday Beers bros. Max and Jack, legends, bro. Love those guys over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, two guys that never met. I mean, give them their own room. You know what I'm saying, guys? Yeah. I think we offer I think it. They, they offer, but I was like, oh, I don't want them to have to like pay that extra money. Very I nice of you Liam, guys, dude. And I was like, nice dude, let's guys. just share. Yeah, and you guys out. are boys. Did you yeah. guys, so you got a sleepover experience. Yeah, we What'd pushed the beds together. We did a mega bed. <laughs> yes, and you built a fort, dude. And we, we, no, actually, we I were remember. so hungover and like anxious from the night before and i we watched um my octopus teacher together great movie dude we, yeah. we like yeah. stacked two chairs together and i put my laptop on it and we would just watch like super sad from the bed that's amazing so soothing yeah. there is a little bit of ennui in that movie also this guy hates his family bro. that's what we said dude, that's exactly right? our take yeah. i was like dude fuck, this guy's a bad father he's a bad People dad are ignoring that part he's like then i showed my son later on he's like and that you know that the some producer was like all right dude go shoot these scenes after you have it like <laughs> take your kid out there in the water yeah it's like yeah dude no you hate your family at least he's not drinking i guess but yeah well we don't know yeah, yeah, he, dude, probably, yeah he could have been he's dude. probably on heavy opioids going he, down there he was speaking fucking, to that octopus he was yeah. fucking that octopus yeah i, I gotta say he definitely Definitely was fucking that. Op- you know, he went down on the octopus first. He seemed like a nice guy, <laughs> you know, and then definitely put his penis yeah. and some orifice on that octopus. Yeah, yeah. dude, that's interesting. Okay, so you went to UMass. Where'd you go, Will? TCU. Dude, go frogs, bro. Well, yeah, I mean, dude, we got to go to the Natty actually to watch TCU in what person. What the fuck was that game? <sighs> um, Tough. Well, actually, we were talking about it this morning for some reason. It was nice that it was a blowout by the start because then I could just enjoy drinking the rest of the day. Smart. Yes, that's true. That's true. So I was like, I was honestly over it after like the first quarter and I was like, it was okay. It was like airline rules. It's like your, your flight's delayed. Let me know. Mm-hmm. Don't just hang or make the announcement. There's no, there's no pilot. This is Southwest. We have no pilots. We're waiting for them to fly in from the other side of the country. <laughs> and then you just get fucking <laughs> bombed at the Rock and Rileys. <laughs> and you're good. Okay. So I, I love that. Dude, uh, no, man, what, what's that? Sorry, where'd you go? UC San Diego. Ooh, so nice. a little bit about my origin is I, I started doing improv. I played volleyball there. And then uh, I was like, you know what? I'm not, I'm, no way I'm going pro and playing a college sport is a fucking job. And then I went to a, just one night happened to go to an improv show for a group called Foosh. What up, dude? And uh, they do short form improv, like games, sort of like whose line is it anyway type games. And I was like, you know what? I could do this. I was always like the class clown in high school and all that type of shit. 
And I was like, I can do this. So then I sent an email and their practice was luckily, there was no barrier to entry. They weren't like do a audition, which I probably would have just said no. And then who knows, I'd be selling real estate now. <laughs> and uh, I just went and then it was awesome. And then I was like, I really like this. And like you, uh, Will, when you graduate during COVID and you were like, there's really no jobs to be getting right now. So let me just see this comedy thing. I graduated during the uh, financial mm. crash mm-hmm. of like 08 and, mm-hmm. and the fallout where like every entry level job was taken by people with experience. So I said, let me just go see about comedy for a little bit, like, and just see what happens. And I've just kind of kept doing that. And, you know, just finally 11 years later, starting to bear a little bit of fruit. But, uh, you know, if, if you're, I would say if you're doing comedy just for the dollars, you are probably doomed. But mm-hmm. if you're doing it for, other reasons and yes we want to get paid to do this and not have the day job but like i don't need to be a multi-billionaire like i'm like if you can pay me a living wage doing this that's what i've got a dank fiance for <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> so that's a little bit of my origin story and so speaking of origin stories before we dive into maybe some of our favorite sketch and we can talk about all the fucking goods that we like and, and our favorite sketches and shit mm. um we must do are we must we must pay off the title of this podcast which is history is dank let's do a little bit of and this is focusing of course we have a western focus here with sketch comedy let's talk about sketch comedy in 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 the united states primarily but we'll we'll it will it does have origins elsewhere mainly europe and in a little bit of canada have you guys heard of vaudeville I have. Okay. I, I heard of vaudeville. I got to tell you, before I researched this episode, no fucking idea what it means. I just imagine like those old timey pianos, like, yeah. and then people like dancing. That's what I picture. Mm-hmm. Aaron, do you know what the fuck vaudeville is? Yeah, it was like a performance circuit in the 20s. Yeah, you're a beast. Yeah. Yeah. See what I mean? He's dude? Superman. Yeah, bro. He's over there just being a beast right now. That's awesome. <laughs> he's got a family. He's got a daughter, dude. He's a, he's a softball champion. Guys, that's his trophy Let's sitting go, right over there. dude. That thing's 10 feet tall. Yeah, it's gigantic. Congrats, brother. It's, it's the size of Maurice's dick. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Aaron, you are right. Originating in the 1890s, popularized to the 1930s, it's, it combines all these. It's before major media like film or anything like that or talkies. Um, it's like just live shows you'd go to. You watch a fucking dude juggle or or say magic or do a monologue or a fucking acrobat or in comedians, trained animals, all that type of shit. So you'd see these variety shows. And so that's basically what vaudeville is. Vaudeville takes, it's mainly rooted in satirical songs, Lonely Island. So mm-hmm. like it's kind of funny, like this avant-garde sketch group from like the 20, what, 10s maybe? Like oh, the aughts. They would have been, yeah, like maybe even early 2000s. Okay, yeah. so these guys, I mean, what they're doing is hearkening back to a long, long, long time ago to the, you know, 100 and 200 years prior. Dude, they're ripping them off. They ripped off vaudeville. <laughs> Everything's derivative, dude. You know what I'm saying, dude? Like, no one's bits are newer and original if they're not mine. So that's <laughs> all. Uh, so you got these things. It's popular. You're thinking about the frontier. You're the wild, wild west. You got the, you know, Buffalo Bill. You got these shows. You're posting up in a town that you know y- you've got fucking your farm you go into town you've got your general store and whatever and maybe you got your saloon your whiskey your brews maybe you get a vaudeville act famous guy tony pastor uh, a cool pastor name. yeah it's a great name i know a ballad and minstrel singer dude he's credited will rogers we heard of him he's a cowboy and comic mm. so sort of um gene autry sort of takes a page out of will rogers book these western frontier guys these frontier shows Trick shooting, a little bit of jokes, blah blah blah. Ooh. Hit your wife, type stuff. Like that, you know, <laughs> funny, funny. Oh, funny fastball, laugh that. Fastball. Yeah, yeah, just all right down the middle, right down the middle. No women involved. No women. No women. Straight for the fellas. But funny enough, Comedia dell'arte, where vaudeville gets its inspiration from, and so improv, and, and thus sketch, sketch comedy. Women were performers, unlike the Globe Theater or the proper um, theatrical groups of the time, where all men would portray women. You know. Uh, there were comedic performers who were women, although I must say it wasn't that um, progressive. People did lash out against it. They're like, no, we want only dudes doing mm-hmm. this. I don't know what that is. I think there, I think there's still a little bit of that around today. Yeah. I would say, well, you're right. There's a, there's backlash on that, mm-hmm. you know, and, and we're three bros talking about sketch comedy, which may seem a little bit d- dated, but um, 
you know, women in sketch comedy, they're great. They're amazing. And, and women in comedy, different perspective. I, I believe comedy is point of view. So whatever point of view you can lend, whatever your background is, I think is only going to make it richer and better. Mm. I think that's one of my favorite things. When I hear a joke or like a point of view that I would have never thought of, I get mad a little bit. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, now, I got a quick question. Uh, yeah. Vaudeville, would they do like a lot of political stuff? Like what? what's the kind of... They would. I feel like, when, you know when you watch that like, Game of Thrones episode where they're like doing the puppet show of like Arya? It's like all about the king and shit. Dude, D- is it like only political stuff? Wait, when I watched that episode, bummed me out so much. I was like, oh, that's me. That's what I fucking do. <laughs> Dude, I'm just, I'm a jester at the Dude, Game of Thrones yeah. wedding. <laughs> You're so right. Yeah, if you think about olden times, like, who, I think I would find myself as either like a gesture or like a night soil man, which is like the dude who would come by and pick up shit and then take <laughs> it out to like the farmlands for fertilizer. Yeah. Like those are my only options. Yeah. I think I'd be crawling around covered in sores. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in a gutter somewhere. I'd get the plague and just be dead. Like yeah. a dog would be feasting on my carcass. <laughs> dude, uh, that's hilarious to think about. I, but yeah, I, that's a great question. A lot of it was political humor. They would do satirical stuff. Risky back then. Yes. And dude, the, uh, the like Commedia dell'arte performers in like Italy and France and stuff, some of them would have the protection of the king. So really, would they be saying anything bad about mm. the throne? Maybe some people would, but then they'd get banished. So Ooh. also in like the 30s in vaudeville, um, people, the, you know, the government was smart. They knew that people would listen to these perspectives and they would like, endorse the theaters or pay them and then they would give them yeah. beneficial mm-hmm. dude that's treatment. like war movies today where the u.s military is like we'll give you all this equipment you can film here yeah but let me take a look at that script real quick dude huh? totally like I mean, top gun maverick bro yeah like, come on yeah people say like some russian oligarch funded that movie or something <laughs> yeah. like that like with the like the next gen fighters or something like yeah, that it's a perfectly diverse group of pilot fighting fighters. yes dude <laughs> but it's sketch it's like yeah you want to use our helicopters and our tanks you better make us look sick <laughs> yeah. i mean it kind of makes sense like you want to make my apartment i don't know you want to use my apartment make it look tight like yeah. i don't know yeah. they probably threw that miles teller vo- beach volleyball scene in there like man, come on dude we're we're all hot guys that was my beef with the movie was the football they played in this one okay because the famous iconic beach volleyball scene from the original Top Gun, you know, and then you got Kenny Loggins playing with the boys, mm-hmm. jacked dudes. I think it's, uh, Aaron, who's the guy who flexes at Viper? Uh, no, Slider. Slider, yes. But Aaron knows Rick, all the call signs, Rick by Rossovich. the way. <laughs> yeah, he fucking flexes, he looks jacked. Uh, this one, they play like offense and defensive football at the same time. I didn't care for it. It's un-American. Yeah. It felt un-American. And it was only, it looked like only passing plays. I was Correct. looking for, I want someone coming down the middle. Run the fucking ball. Yeah. Someone get on the goal line and run the fucking ball down their throat. 21 dive. Thank, let's, let's thank do it. you, bro. Yeah. Exactly, dude. <laughs> get Brady under center and just let him fucking sneak it in. <laughs> who, was, who was telling that, us that story about the volleyball scene in the second movie? Oh, uh, fuck. I forgot who was telling us, but it was about uh, Tom Cruise showed up to set, saw how cut all the young hot studs were. And was basically like, okay, fuck it. We're, we're pushing the scene uh, three months or whatever it was. I need to go get shredded. Shows up again. They film it. Uh, everyone thinks they're wrapped on the scene. So all these actors that have been starving themselves on these crazy diets for months are go and have this big... Wait, no, he did it twice. twice. Yeah, this is the, but this, yeah, this is the second yeah. time. So they all eat and they're eating shit like they, because their shirt's going to be on for the rest of the shooting. They're like, we're good. Uh... Then Cruz is like, oh, no, we're going to film it again, you know, in a week or, or like tomorrow or something. So now he got everyone all fattened up. So he's cutting it. Push the movie twice oh just so he could get jacked. Not which to, I respect. Yeah, not to change it real I quick. I like that. But the most cut old dude I've ever seen is Stallone in Rocky Balboa. Yes. Mm. Saw, terrible movie, but jacked. Terrible. Saw that yeah. in theaters and just remember being like, this is crazy. Yes. I was young, too. I yes. was like, this. these are... Muscles I didn't know existed. Dude, he looks amazing in that movie. You know who's pretty jacked when they get old was um, Action Bronson. He's pretty fucking ripped when he's old back in the day. Charles Bronson. Yes. yes. Oh, I was going to okay, say. I was say yeah. Charles Bronson, but yeah, he would go by Action Bron- Bronson. Well, Action Bronson's jacked now, too. Really? Yeah, he's been working out. Wait, who the fuck is Action Bronson? The rapper? The new guy? Rapper. He's a, uh... I'm old, showing my age. <laughs> Check him out. He's so we're great. talking about the jazz music. <laughs> Dude, uh, okay, I got to look him up. Yeah, he's the man. He's also hilarious. Speaking of bad yeah. boxing movies, 
Um, did you guys see Creed 3? I've seen zero Creed's. Okay, Creed 1 is amazing. Okay. Creed 1 might be one of my favorite. My favorite Rocky movies go 1, 4, and then Creed. That's how really? I rank them. Oh, shit. Okay. It's really good. Uh, but then 2 and 3, and especially 3, Michael B. Jordan directs. No good? No. Dude, those, that's another series that fell through the cracks for me. Rocky and Creed. I know. Did you see the uh, Planet of the Apes series? Yes. Yeah, dude. Those that's are, a fucking incredible series, I didn't bro. finish them, but holy shit, those are good movies. Dude, they're great movies. Dude, go out, rage with the boys. Angus, we have some... When you get anxiety, you're going to be very, very good. You're safe. <laughs> okay. You're yeah, very yeah. safe. This is, I'm saving Sopranos. Like, you're, like, you have these movies... I'm going to watch Sopranos when I'm like a little bit older and just like dive in. I've only seen like one or two episodes. I've mm. seen the pilot. I liked it, but I've just like, I'm daunted. It's a, it's a big investment. It is. It, I'm glad you're waiting though. Cause like you're going to be, gl it's like, uh, you, you're going to be very happy you waited just cause like I, every time I breeze through a show, I'm like, fuck, I wish I could reset my memory and watch that again. Right? That's one of those shows. Sopranos yes. is one of those shows where I watch it and I start acting different. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Dude, I like I'm that. Like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. Like, I Liam's got, like, you, you, I got a fucking guy. You show up at Friday beers, like, hey, I got my fucking uh, parking guy. I got my fucking you know lunch guy. <laughs> you got yeah, yeah. you got all sorts of guys who get you stuff. Yeah, dude, I love that, dude. Uh, nice little fucking riff right there with the boys. Oh, and we're we're double down. Riffing. You guys are going down on these beers faster than I am. Cheers to you, bro. Cheers. These are delicious. We're, we're sipping on some Racer Fives right now. Um, I wanted to get Anchor Brew, but they were sold out, which is a good sign. So hey, it's a great beer. It it is a nice beer. It's great. I love an IPA, and all you need is two. An yeah. IPA, love that. Thank Stealing you. that. That's yeah, mine. Take now. it to the bank. Spread it like wildfire, <laughs> <laughs> baby. Just spread it. Um. So you've got this Camino del Arte going on, typically improvised. So probably bad. Let's be honest. Most Where is improv this Camino del Arte. Italy, Fran Europe, ah. but mainly its origins. So its origins are sort of, it's a good question that you ask, are um, debated. A lot of people say, um, you know, French origins, also going back to Roman era, which would be Italy. Um, but some people give credit to the Byzantine monks. Some people are saying, dude, the monks were making jokes. Monks were some of the first to brew beers. Monks were posting up jacking off drinking beers doing sketch comedy uh, yeah dude dude I'm a monk yeah, bro I'm a monk too did you take all the do you take the aww <laughs> you're just singing like that with your, dude they were doing the halo chant <laughs> like these guys had life figured out <laughs> people were paying them taxes they're being like yeah no you'll go to heaven don't worry like yeah. I'll absolve you like monks had it figured out back in the day that would have been guys our smartest move if we didn't make it at, as gestures or night soil men or will who had boils uh -huh. being feasted on sores. by rodents yeah. Sor yeah, sores. <laughs> yeah. uh we should have all just been monks dude i was raised by monks like all my order. teachers were monks really yeah i i dude i even know like all the words to like i know latin from what? songs no yeah what I could. That's so deep south, dude. Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah, dude, that's amazing. I, I don't even. I don't even know all of English yet. Could you speak Latin? Yeah, yeah. Give us some. Latin, okay, this dude. is. This would be a, a Latin hymn. Yes. Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, pleni sunt celi et terra gloria tua. Hosanna in excelsis. Benedictus quinteli et nomine Domini. Hosanna in excelsis. That's just a refrain from one of the Latin songs. I was literally, we were doing that. Yeah. Dude, really? Yeah, I, do, I knew all the Latin to every hymn. That's crazy. That's incredible. What does that so mean? Weird. What did you just say? Hosanna in the highest. Did you just yeah, curse us? I did. Is our firstborn going to die? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. We can't get boners anymore, dude? You leave me and Liam can't get boners anymore, dude? Dude, we sang that song in my Catholic school, but it was in fucking English. Yeah, dude, we did. We probably did the same yeah. thing. Like, Hosanna in the That's what we did, too. Is you guys it, went to Catholic school? Did you go to Catholic school? Yeah. Yeah, I grew That's up That's why we school. all get along. Yeah. yeah. You kind of need... Dude, going to Catholic school is kind of a good move because it, it, it gets you a little horny for life. Like, you mm -hmm. sound... Will, you sound extra horny for life because they deny you things. They, mm -hmm. you know... I don't know. Like, at least there was girls at my school, which was like, uh, like I don't think I would have gotten out of bed. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't talking to any girls. I was just making jokes and then walking away quickly. But like, 
it was nice that there was girls at school, dude, yeah. growing up. Like, I think it's important to have that. I did a... Uh... Never know. <laughs> did you at least have, like, a sister school? Who'd you guys ask to dances? Oh, we had a sister school, but we were, like, the loser school. And really? they, had, they had a... They had a uh... <laughs> Do they call them brother schools, I guess? <laughs> I guess. But, dude, we've had conversations where I'm like, yeah, I was at like this, like, I'm telling a story from high school. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you know? And he's like, no, man. I Literally, I don't think I ever went to a party with girls. <laughs> so, uh, no, like, no way. No, dude, I think, like, Liam always talks about his life, and I'm like, dude, like, I didn't do anything for 12 years. <laughs> yeah. I just kind of, like, I, I was, yeah, I just didn't do anything. <laughs> it's crazy. I guess that's why... I, like uh, me and my friends just had to I mean, that's make videos time. and do weird shit, and that's how I'm here. Dude, you know what? We were doing the same thing, man, and it's a beautiful thing, and I'm glad you did it. Mm -hmm. um, Dude, I think uh, like a lot of people, eighth grade was probably the most transformative year of my life. Yes. Because I went pre-kindergarten through seventh grade at Catholic school, and then eighth grade was just like, fuck it, I'm going to go to public school. Really? So I went to public middle school in eighth grade, and I remember right. walking in just being like, Hey, kids are faster and they're meaner. And, Dude, yes. And I'm bro. wearing uh, pink shorts right now because I thought that was. Oh, good luck. I thought Vineyard Vines was sick because it wasn't my school. Wrong. Mm -hmm. Wrong. Dude, mid <laughs> middle schoolers still terrify me. Oh. I'm just afraid a group of middle schoolers are going to come up and ask me hard science questions. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to feel so small. <laughs> They're savages, dude. And, and then public middle school kids, I also went to a private middle school. And I would invite some of my buddies that went to public middle school to our dances. Cisco, Ying Yang Twins, Venga Boys, <laughs> just fucking bumping. And... Uh, they would make out with the girls from our school. And I was like, I don't even know girls at our school made out. These <laughs> guys got girls at our schools to make out. I, I was like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> I had the same thought. I remember hearing at like Pop Warner football practice that someone had hooked up and fingered. And someone I was like, fingered. I, 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 I thought that's an option. That's not an option. Where yeah, that, exactly. Nobody's that doing anything. Yes, that doesn't happen. <laughs> The only thing I would finger is just myself, dude. Like, <laughs> you know, in, yeah. through my Massimo board shorts that I bought at Target. Dude. dude, I would see people grind at dances, and I'd be like, "This is when I was super Catholic." I'd be like, "This is pandemonium, dude. We're, <laughs> oh, we're, yeah, bro. we're toast. I can't believe this disease spread through here." <laughs> but it's this like is eighth grade, guys, and this is so important that we're talking about this right now, and it, and it plays exactly what we're talking about too, because. And look, for me, this is, I, I'm not going to put you guys in the same box. I'll, I'll ask you this question in a moment. But for myself, a big reason I got into comedy was, one is control. When I'm being funny or laughing, that is like a defense mechanism because I know I'm controlling the outcome. If, we're, if, everyone, if everyone's laughing and humor's happening, okay, I know where we're going. It's a comfortable zone to operate in. Mm -hmm. With girls, I'm even more uncomfortable because, you know, there's the innate thing. Ooh, something can happen. So when I'm a young man, I would make jokes with girls. Dude, there was girls, dude. There was a girl that I used to have a crush on. Amy, dude, what up, dude? <laughs> and Christy, dude, what up, dude? And I would make jokes to a point where literally one time I was in, in hanging out, dude, at her house. Like we went in the jacuzzi and I kept making jokes, was giving her a massage. And she literally made this noise. Because I wouldn't stop making jokes. Jokes, she went, oh. Let's just burn a CD together. Like, dude, like literally got myself in the friend zone. I think about it to this day oh. when I go to bed. <laughs> and uh, dude, it was amazing. But also a big reason why I got into sketch, I became good at it. And then I was like, mm. I'm very good at this. Yeah. Um, maybe the industry hasn't recognized that yet, but they're idiots. <laughs> They'll know. What do you mean? You're at Netflix, They'll know. dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you, dude. dude. Thank you, Will, for saying that. No, not Liam. Thank you for saying that, Liam. Um, but... That skill set has led to a, a career of like just knowing what you're doing and where to operate. Uh, my question for you guys what is, and we've talked about this a little bit, what got you into comedy or this or that, but now that you're doing comedy, do you feel comfortable in it in sketch? Because you guys have had success like with like, dude, if I was a young guy in your shoes coming out of college, like doing sketches and fucking being at Friday beers and almost TV with almost Friday TV is what, mm -hmm. that's what it's called yeah. right almost Friday that's TV the sketch group almost Friday is the parent company and mm -hmm. then the sketch group is almost Friday TV which you should all check out and listen to and I'll put the links and everything in the um, episode description uh, you guys are bumping out a sketch a week but do you feel I would say comfortable or at an identity or 
do you feel driven to do, to do more? Where is it coming from, your drive, besides your passion in, in loving comedy? Every time I walk home from work, I think to myself, I ran out of whatever it is that got me this job, and uh, I'm a fraud. So. Dude, amazing. That's Dude, I think that's every comic, bro. That's like, yes. Dude, I, I still can, think I can see that. Yeah. And it doesn't help me that I know most people think like that. I think that I'm the only one where that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rarity a great... for us to make something. Very uh, it's happened. It's happening more often now with the YouTube sketches because yeah. we have a, a team of people on it. So I'm like, okay. But yeah. if it's just Will and I or Will, me, Billy, and Chet working on something, I'll make it and then I'm like, this fucking sucks, dude. Yes. We are unfunny. Everyone's going to realize that we're phonies mm -hmm. tomorrow. <laughs> and they're going to know that we suck. Yeah. And and it's just like every day. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's every single day. It's like yeah. it's it's like expanding. I, there's, I'm suffocated in a room. It's just. Yes. Yeah. No, but you know what? You guys are doing it together and you're growing together. And you are you have the skill and the abilities and like. And it's nice to have the the backing of that vehicle of Friday beers and the internet because that's where it lives. Even like an institutional show like Saturday Night Live or something, which I've watched forever. Like I used to watch it. The, I got introduced on reruns on Comedy Central, then would watch it live. And now I just take it in on Instagram or clips mm -hmm. or yeah. YouTube. And that's like like clip shows are, are, are like the new thing, which uh, no, you guys are like in the medium and doing great stuff and, and like growing together. That's kind of what people like to see. You know, it's like, cool. Yeah, it is nice. I, I definitely think, yeah, because we're coming up on two years of doing it, being out here. And, uh, yeah, looking back on some of the stuff we were doing a little over a year ago, me specifically, I'm watching my own, sh like, what I was doing in the sketches, and I was like, all right, okay, I'm a little better now. Like, mm -hmm. I can see that happening, which is nice. And uh, You have to have that. You have to, like, I forget what movie I was watching, but somebody said something. It was, like, a writer and he's like, I hate myself every five years. If you don't, if you look, I mean, and every once in a while you'll look at your joke book and you'll be like, oh, hell yeah, I still like that, that works, that's nice, which is great when maybe you have a writer's block, but no, you're evolving and growing and mm -hmm. you should have that. Dude, I've like looked at sets. That is sort of like the um, double-edged sword of the internet because so much stuff you have to put out. Like when I was, I'm a little bit older than you guys and like I did a lot of like 99-seater theaters where it was just, and we would film some shows and put some sketches up, but mainly it was went up that night and then died and was gone, and then that was it. Maybe I would take a character and put it on a reel for mm -hmm. an audition or something, but with the internet, it's permanent. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's there. If people want to find it and you post it, even if you delete it, like, someone can go and check it out. Digital And you're like, yeah. fuck, that's not funny, dude. I don't, <laughs> like, like that anymore. But... That's just the name of the game. And I'm extra fired up to show off my new language chops that I've been learning about thanks to Babbel, dude. So if you've got an upcoming summer trip abroad, may, my go-to travel hack is Babbel, bro. Whether you're a seasoned traveler or embarking on your first adventure, communication is key to fully experiencing a new culture. That's where Babbel comes in. Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions, dude. Look, bro, I took a lot of language in high school. Class was too long, couldn't focus, not easy, didn't care. With Babbel, bro, lessons are quick. They're developed by actual people, not freaking AI, dude, which my buddies like to corner me and talk about. Not that. Real, actual language professionals and experts develop it dude they can get in your dome and help you learn the language that you need to in a fun easy effective quick way that's what i like dude 10 minutes bro to complete a lesson 10 minutes set it up bro dude you'll be having real life conversations little as three weeks bro so i'm fired up on that i'm fired off to show off my skills i've been practicing on my boy tomek at the food truck dude can't wait to cruise over to poland on my freaking honeymoon dude it's gonna be awesome bro Babel, you, look, and it's not just Polish. You can choose up to 14 different languages. Whatever you like, whatever is your passion, do it. So right now, get up to 55% off on your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash dank. That's babbel.com slash dank for 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. Hey, Danktorians, we're the union workers of Anchor Brewing Company in San Francisco, America's first craft brewery. Maybe you remember us from previous episodes of History is Dank, like the IPAs and IRAs of California Beers episode. I remember that episode. It was freaking fired. It was a dank episode. If you didn't listen, you should go back and listen. It's super dank. 
Anyway, us, the Union Workers, we've been working hard for the past 127 years to bring you some of the best beer in the world, but it's time for our hard work to be recognized. They're currently in the uh, negotiation for their second contract with management, and they need your support. So right now, dude, I'm supporting them. I love Anchor Brewing, by the way. I've been there. I take the tour. It's super fun. It's one of my favorite spots to cruise to in SF whenever I'm there after I get a nice little tasty little uh, chicken parm on the um, North Beach area in the Italian district. I love to cruise over to Anchor Brewing and taste a nice little, nice little Ippa from there. The people are always nice. The brew is good. You know, so support people that have the skills that make the brew, that makes it dank, that makes you, you know, feel that bit of joy or take the edge off your day or whatever it is. It's the people of Anchor Brewing. It's the people that make the product. So if you're a fan of history in a nice, smooth, crispy lager or a dank, toasty IPA like me, then... Myself and the people of Anchor are encouraging you to show your support for the union workers. You can do this right now. It only takes a second. Reach out to the company at Anchor Brewing on social media and let them know you stand with the workers by using hashtags, hashtag Anchor Union and hashtag Anchored in SF. For updates, you can follow our efforts on social media platforms at at Anchor Union SF. Together, we can make sure the people who bring you your favorite beer are treated fairly. What made me feel better about it, too, was... Max Barrett is a, he's a book of, he'll make you feel better. Like he'll say things. I'm like, oh, okay, I feel better about it now where he describes sketch comedy and stand up. I guess where he's like, it's the only thing that you have to practice in, in front of you have to, yeah. you can't go and shoot at a fucking closed gym and then show up game day and hit all the threes. You got to go shoot in front of everyone. So everyone's going to see, like, you're going to have to actively improve in front of everyone, which blows, Yeah, but yeah. it is what it is. Yes. It sucks, but it is what it is. Yes. It, but it's also the beauty and there's like no there are like some rules to it where okay a premise and maybe a good sketch can be boiled down to like a nice two line joke like a setup mm-hmm. and a premise like if you're writing a sketch for those listening if you're interested in getting into it you know your sketch you're going to have your exposition then by the hopefully two thirds down of the first page you've got your premise of your joke then you hit it two times then you have an honest reveal then you have a turn on it and a tag and you're out and it's a you know three and a half to four pages nice but you can break any of these fucking rules and you can and have fun so it's like that's what I like about the forum too is it's like I'm, I, I like doing stand up and, and I know um, Liam you do stand up and, and Will you were mentioning earlier like you're, you're you know more of a, a sketch performer mm-hmm. and um um, but I always loved sketch. I always loved the group stuff more. It's just fun, dude. Collaborating with people. Like yeah. I, I would, that was like my early twenties and into, into late twenties. And it was the best, dude. I think what you were saying earlier about like, you, you feel like you have the control when you're making the jokes. Like, I think that's why I like sketch more is cause I feel it, there. I feel like there's almost no control with stand up cause you have to rely on the crowd. Whereas sketch, like even if something bombs, like. I had complete control over it, and I did it in a vacuum. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, no, that makes sense. But you I don't know. I yeah. think that's why I like it way more. S- Performing, not consuming. Yeah. Well, it's fun, too. And it, and you can take, and it takes the, like, the onus off you a little bit. We're like, stand-up, you're not going to go and perform someone else's stand-up. I mean, that's, I, I mean, well, still, I guess like the main guys who do late night have monologues written for them and all that, but I don't, that's not like a stand up special. Yeah. But with sketch, I like when someone comes up with an idea or like, Liam, I'm sure you've written something where you're like, Will, I think you'd fucking crush at this, bro. I got this character for you. Go fucking nail it. And vice versa, mm-hmm. you know, or, or like for Chet or Billy, like, I love what all you guys are doing. And I'm like, uh, I love that camaraderie aspect of it because I'm about the boys, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the ladies, too. You know, yep. they're yep. fucking funny, dude. I, I came up doing Groundlings in Second City, dude, and there are talented fucking performers, dude, and um, it's just fun. Let's talk about our um, our greatest inspirations. What are your guys' f- uh, favorite sketch groups? You know, you, maybe I'll throw a few out there. You got the Lonely Island. You know, you got, you got SNL. Are mm-hmm. you guys more adult swim guys? Are you more of this... You know, are, are you, um, you know, Mr. Show type guys, Human Giant, you know, Chappelle, Kim Peel? What are, you, what, are your, what are your inspirations? What do you go I, back and watch? I would say the, the first big inspiration wasn't even a sketch group. It was uh, Will Ferrell. I saw him in Kicking and Screaming, and oh, I was yeah, like, dude. I want to be that dude. And I was, you know, I was like eight. Yes. And I was like, that's, that's it. That's the only goal in life. Um, and then for yes. sketch, 
Uh, good neighbor stuff is really where I realized like yes, you could you could be really weird. It's almost like just like making your intrusive thoughts a video. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I yeah. like that. Yeah, I like that's that. dude. That's a great way of putting it. And I think our sensibilities are very similar. I loved Will Ferrell. That's why I went to Groundlings. I literally did improv, and then I was like, Where did Will Ferrell study? Groundlings. Got to go take a class. Exact same thinking. And then Good Neighbor. Love those guys. Mm-hmm. SoCal guys. Kyle Mooney's from San. Excuse me, San Diego. I'm not sure where Beck Ben is from, but uh, loved their stuff. Loved, loved, loved. And yeah, taking your innermost thoughts, I think that's true of comedy. Taking your innermost intimate thoughts and mm-hmm. pathos and putting it out with some craft, I mean, bro, that's what it's about. Yeah. What about you, Liam? Me, because uh, I, I started watching sketch comedy really young. So it was three things most. It was Lonely Island was first, I would say. Beasts. Uh, and then once I think people, like older friends of mine, maybe cousins and shit, realized that I really liked that, they're like, okay, you gotta watch the Chappelle show. Mm. So I watched that when I was really young. Half of them, now it's so great to go watch, like, watch again, because yes. I go, oh, I understand these now. When I was seven, I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? Yeah. But still, some of them hit, and uh, I remember like w- making kids watch those in school. And then the third one, maybe the probably the biggest one was Weiss, because you know, those guys yeah. are great. Oh, dude, awesome. the slow jerk off. It's the greatest, one it's, is one of the best sketches I've ever seen in my life. I think the gallon of PCP the is. Yeah, dude. It is. <laughs> it's great. I, it is the. There's no. Fa- it's the perfect it's so fucking good. sketch, it's dude. So mm-hmm. good. It really is, and it's so cool. R.I.P. Trevor Moore. That's fucking crazy. I know. He's gone, but yeah, uh, yeah, he's so great. And then uh, Zach Kreger is now. He just directed. Um, that awesome. Oh, you see Barbarian? Yeah, yeah. yeah you see oh, that? I haven't seen it, but yeah, I hear it's amazing. Aaron, wow. did you watch it? Really. And Dude, it's, so I should watch good. it tonight. You should. And it's hilarious. Really? It's, yeah. But not in an I annoying horror movie way. Don't even spoil it's, why. It's, like, yeah, it's genuinely so funny. funny. Terrifying. Really? It's so good. It's so fucking fun, dude. Dude, you get a lot of sketch performers coming out. Like, look at Jordan Peele. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The guy's a beast, dude. He's yeah, His elevated horror genre that he's, like, basically developed. It's incredible. Dude, fucking very, very talented, mm-hmm. you know, directors, writers, performers coming out of sketch. Okay, gun to your head. Gun to your head. And I'm threatened to push you off a cliff. <laughs> Favorite sketch of all time. Oh, wow, yeah. Take your time to think about it. Okay. Take your time to think about it. Maybe I'll go first Fuck. while you think about I, it. I already know what it is. Okay, you already have yours. Yeah. But if you want to... We might have the same one. Okay, well... I'd my, be horny to think, is Will Ferrell in it or no? No. Okay, okay, no, then no, it's mine's, not the mine's same. Mine's newer. Okay, I like oh. that. Okay, go. Ooh. It's, uh, I think you should leave. No, 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 it's not. I think you should leave. Oh, I lo- it's, dude, it's that's Tim Robinson, the be- Tim Robinson's amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's I, my favorite show right that's, now. That's... He's probably, like, of, of my top 10 sketches, five are probably from I Think You Should Leave. I agree. That guy is a beast. Like Chappelle's show, you truly feel like it's his joke book come to life. And it's so fucking funny. Mm-hmm. And it's so fast. Episodes are 16 minutes. Great. Okay. What, uh, Will, hit us with it's, it. It's uh, from his Netflix show, The Characters. He had one episode. Oh, yeah. He got three sketches. And it's Lady yeah. Luck. Oh, I don't great. know if there's a name of the sketch because it's the first one to kick off the episode. Sammy Paradise. Yes. And, yeah, 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 Sammy Paradise. I just think it's like yeah. so perfectly written. And then the way it like backtracks all the way through the sketch, it takes you back to the start. It's, it's unreal. Yeah. I remember being very impressed seeing that. And I was like, this is next level. Yeah. So good. Incredible. Yeah. I would have mm-hmm. said if that came out when I was a kid, that would have been my number one for sure. 1, it, it's, it's my number one now. Mm-hmm. Um, fuck. Okay. Damn. This is a tough question. I'll... I'll go based off what really fired me up to get into sketch comedy. That's what I'm talking was, about. I got, I'm, gonna, I'm cheating. I'm doing too. Love it. The Back Seatsman, Lonely Island. It was like 17 years ago. Uh, Andy Samberg uh, <laughs> plays a, 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 a guy who he has a fictional job where he's a back seatsman, and his job is that he rides around in the backs of cars. Hilarious. And, <laughs> and it's, I just go watch it. It's in, it's five minutes. It's too long, and it's yeah. so fucking funny. Uh, it's, and I remember watching that when I was probably seven and going, "What the? This is," and crying, laughing, going, "How? Who the fuck? What? How, how the fuck do people think of that?" Yeah. And awesome. then gallon of PCP. <laughs> is is the greatest shit I've ever seen. They're so Gallant's good. PCP is number one for me. They're so sure. good, dude. Yeah. Can I guess what your Will Ferrell sketch is? Please. Is it the one where he's the 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 boss that's like screaming at everyone in the 
And then he fights. Um, Kai goes no, okay, Chris no, no, no. Get no, off but the shed. I do love that. Okay, the shed from his audition to get yeah. off the shed is amazing. But I love, and I don't think I don't even think Will Ferrell wrote this. But I, my favorite is when um, it's the uh, arrogant professors at the Welshy Arms when they're in the in the hot tub, yeah. hot tub, in, in the hot tub, and he's <laughs> and he's it's him and um, is it Rachel Dratch? Is, Rachel Dratch, yeah. yeah. And they're very arrogant professors, and they like make weird love, and and they're very like erudite. And uh, in the distance, yes, I heard the beating. Yeah, of native drums. drums. Yeah, the writing in there is so specific and weird. I was just always like, this is the best, yeah. dude. And then at the end, like they start making love, and then he the out is like, he's like, my back off, oh. <laughs> yeah, get off me. Yeah. He plays angry very yeah, well. Yeah. Although yeah. the waters above seem calm, <laughs> yes, there's a frenzy yes. of activity below. Dude, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Fingers fluttering, thighs twitching. <laughs> I'm like, dude, dude, I just love that writing. And I also love it because I don't think he wrote it, and it's why I really like sketch comedy. One, because of my innate laziness. But someone wrote that, and then he just drills it, where he's like, he's so fucking committed, and the writers on that show knew and he was going to be a beast and bring it for any premise which i like well he had mckay writing too on that yes. so i think that was probably a mckay one yeah because he been. could write for will so fucking it still can Amazing. even though they broke up r.i.p but i know um, yeah it's a bummer rachel dratch i think I is i mean everyone knows about her awesome. but i i'm like Dude. it's underrated as fuck. her debbie downer <laughs> so fucking so good. good, dude. It, dude, her Debbie Downer is so the one where it's Lindsay Lohan hosting. Yes, yeah, her at yeah. Disney. Disneyland. It's the best, dude. dude. And they're all brave. That's the one of the few times where it's like you're so happy they're all brave. It's charming, yes. Yeah, and it's there really it charming. works. It works. It's not just Jimmy Fallon shtick, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's your favorite stand-up? You too. Probably Carlin. I love George Carlin. He's awesome. He's the best. He's a he's the philosopher comic. He I would watch like, I think I remember being at a sleepover when I was young seeing him do like, as an older man do like his special that was on HBO at the time watching it and being like laughing like being like whoa like I have taste like I'm like kind of understanding this which was interesting as a teenager and then going back and looking at his old mm -hmm. stuff and it was like awesome yeah. so I love Carlin that story about his 9-11 uh, special is crazy that that wasn't the one I watched wait what was his 9-11 he time? like he released a special called like um I, I can't remember what it was. Can we? I can. It's like I hope everyone dies. Yeah, and I think, it, I think it was supposed to come out literally the day after 9/11. Oh I'm my not kidding. God. He recorded it and everything. Damn, that would have been fucking. Whoa! Insane. Did it ever come out? Can you? No, hear? because 9/11. Yeah, but I, but now they should release it, and I want to hear it now. Grievances or something like that? Yeah. He's great, though. I, I went down a rabbit hole one summer and watched, I think, just like everything that was on YouTube that he was in. Yeah. It's awesome. Beast. Yeah. What about you guys? I'll go just straight off of what inspired me in my youth again. Yes. Uh, Nick Swartzen and Rachel Feinstein. Oh, yeah. I would uh, just... Rachel Feinstein was on Last Comic Standing, I think. Uh, and that's how I saw her. And then sports was just always playing on Comedy Central on TV. Mm -hmm. So I would take their jokes and just go to school and just nobody knew them. So I would just do them and I murder. Them. I would be murdering in sixth grade, <laughs> like fucking <laughs> crazy. Like That's, that's amazing, awesome. dude. Uh, that's the best. Yeah, so those two for sure. Oh, what about you, Will? I think um, my f he didn't inspire me, but I remember being a kid and thinking Dane Cook was the funniest person on the planet. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And Dude, then, his specials were incredible. Yeah, they, they were awesome. Yeah. But then um, I think I saw some Louis C.K. specials, and those inspired me. Like, incredible. oh, I just want to write and yes. do stuff. Um, his cadence inspired so many people too, yes. which is like interesting. You can still see it. Oh, for sure, dude. There's, for sure. We had, we had a joke in because I started doing open mics in Boston, and every time you go to an open mic, you see a new kid. He'd just go up there and be he'd be doing Burr. Mm -hmm. And one thousand bummer. Percent. Would 1, he do the girl percent. voice? And he would do the girl voice. Uh, and like yeah, yeah. He yeah the <laughs> yeah. Uh, the pacing the cadence was the same and. Uh, but that ha that happens when you're starting out. It's like yeah. you, you do yeah. whoever you love. Yeah. Like I I uh, 
I definitely did that a little bit, but I think one of the worst. I moments. did a lot of Cosby. Coming <laughs> yeah. Up. yeah, yeah, you loved Cosby yeah. off stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I would do sports and I'd be like fucking party. What's up, guys? <laughs> yes, yes. But I remember one time. Uh, this is the greatest open mic thing I ever saw. It made me so happy. Was uh, this guy was on stage? I think it was like the the Wander Bar, like Alston, Boston, Massachusetts, and. Uh, this dude did a Chappelle knee slap with the mic. Oh, dude, no. Nice. And the host goes, get off. Amazing. Get off stage. We're not doing that here. Get the fuck off. And everyone was like, yes. Dude. And the guy couldn't believe it. He goes, you think you're getting away with doing a Chappelle fucking knee slap here? Get off stage. Love that. Self-regulating. I, I was 19. I was like, this is the greatest host of all time. Fuck yes. Shout out. Shout out. Ah, oh, fuck his name. Dude, you get some tough open mic hosts, dude. I, I used to go to Bruco over in Westwood, and there were some tough. I did a bit one time. Where I try to do a bit about, um, like, a, I shouldn't even probably say this, but I did a bit about what the Native American tribes were like in Los Angeles. And so the whole bit was about just being like, oh, we like kale. And <laughs> we go to like yoga and spin yeah. class. And I did the bit and how I hit my beats. And you know, the laughter was like, uh huh. And then the host at the time was this guy, Robert. He goes, never do that again. <laughs> Literally into the mic, he goes, Never do that bit again, and then just kept it moving. And I was like, "Whoa, oh, that's gotta stick." Yeah, fuck that. Yeah. How long? How dude. long did that He's one done. burn for? Oh, dude, to this day, bro. Yeah. To this, I think about it to this day, and I didn't mind Robert. He was like, he was for sure a dick, but he was nice. He he was a nice guy, but bro, fuck just, Robert, dude. I don't stand yeah, with Robert yeah. at all. It was look. Was it a great bit? No. Should have been like. It should have been a sketch. It should have been like a sketch. And that would have been fine. Sounds but, like uh, a great bit. Yeah, you know, <laughs> bring it back. You, know, you can. You, yeah, the, the beats are all there. The beats <laughs> yeah. are there. You know, is it work going through it? Yeah. Uh, okay, so I got I got to transition us back into history a little bit. Oh, you I were mentioning this. how you watched the SNL clips, mm -hmm. um, which is really interesting to me because, like, I know all my friends. No one's watching Saturday Night Live at night anymore. Like, I'll, I'll watch the clips online. I'll watch the cutdowns, like. I'm very interested to see how these cutdowns affect like the attention span of people mm -hmm. and how long sketches were. Because like you know we're posting thirty to sixty second sketches, we really have to just get it down to like what the joke is and move on. Um, how long were these sketches back in the day for vaudeville? Was it like twenty minute plays? Was it thirty minute plays? Was it like five minute? They would be. It would probably be like five to seven minutes is my guess because when I did this research, it would say it was short scenes coupled together, 10 to 15 of them. So you figure people are sitting there for an hour to an hour and a half. So that would be what my guess is for the duration. But you bring up a great point of the evolution of sketch comedy, which is now attention span in people and like TikTok and all that, where it's like you're either instant gratification getting someone's attention in the first one to three seconds. Yeah with like a joke and then moving on, which is like, you know, sometimes media or the medium helps in art form. I think in this case, like, and maybe this is just me being an old man where I'm like, I feel like a lot of times it hurts it. You know, I'll see some stuff where I'm like, dude, like just enjoy the media, like just be able to sit back for one second. But the thing is, if is a lot of times we do sketch and we do these quick videos hoping that we'll get a deal for like something longer form that people want to sit down for. Yeah. At least like that's what I like, you know, like I want a little bit of a longer form medium. Um, but you have to like, that's the name of the game. Like you fucking have to be quick. And like, if you're not getting people hooked in the, in a first second, it's so tough. Yeah. Like Which it stinks too. Cause I mean, we've had sketches where I, I do my stand up too. I mean, maybe it's just like terrible. It probably is. But I just like waiting. I like a, I like pausing. Yeah. I like I like building a little bit and uh -huh. then just but it's, it's TikTok if you're making TikToks it's like no no like nobody's game. fucking doing it. Exactly. Like your stand up. Yeah, that for stand up people are sitting down, they're watching like it's nice to lead people and then you you can create a misdirect. You can go with your stand up down one avenue and then double cross your audience like that's good. That's good stand up. There's no time for that with like sketches on TikTok or Instagram. Do you scroll through TikTok? I do. It has me figure dude, I used to hate it, but it figured out my brain now. Now my brain is figured out. Yeah, once it gets your algorithm yeah. corrected, it's great. Mine's, but mine's what, dark. 
Yeah, yeah, yours is bad. <laughs> Mine's dark, we'll get bro. into that. <laughs> oh, I want to hear about your dark, dark. What are you watching? Like uh, okay. you know, uh, execution uh, videos? No, no, not videos. like that. It's just like the the way. I'll <laughs> I'm very excited to see how you explain this. <laughs> this, is, this is how I explain it. This is because I know what it is. <laughs> I encapsulate it as right. Will's the IRS. You better yeah, do your taxes yeah. right, dude. All right, cut this if you need to. But it's people with Down syndrome pursuing a career in hip hop. Is, is that's what is, you like? That's what my algorithm is, dude. It's so weird. It's, <laughs> it's like, it's how did you get there? Like, what videos did you watch that it went? Bro, we I don't got, know. We have a fastball for Liam. Bella. Is it charming to you? Do you like it? Do you like? I like. I'll, I'm. I sub, I'm supportive and shit. Yes. Like, I, I have like, because people are so mean yes. to some people on TikTok that I I like get in the comments and be like, "Fuck that, do you, man?" I like that. That's because like they're bullying kids yeah. with like disabilities, and I'm like, "It's messed up, dude. Let him ride." Also, I thoroughly love watching his music videos. Yeah, maybe they're funny to me, but whatever, I like doing it. Yeah, it, that's it, fine. Like, I'm enjoying the entertainment. Yeah, that's nice. And you can tell they love making those videos. It's actually awesome to see him get like a big following. I know. It's yeah. That's the thing now. It's because. Kids, even if they're like fully abled people, the worst talented people on TikTok are getting followers now because it's kind of like anti. It's like, oh, if you, I want, I want to make this kid. Everyone wants to make this one kid famous because he's so yes. strange and it shouldn't happen for him. Yes, but it is. And I just love that shit. I love seeing this kid just be like, I'm popping off. That's fucking awesome, dude. Like it, he's getting it, fired up. Yeah. Have you seen those videos on TikTok where like it'll be? It's either someone giving a, a long-winded speech about life or it's someone giving like a it's like a, a just a clip from a TV show and that's at the top half of the screen and the bottom half is someone mixing paint or cutting foam subway or, surfers oh yes or like someone right. playing an iPhone game yeah. or just a scene from family guy isn't like that satisfying stuff happening yeah, people it's, like that it's it's so that you're when you're feeling like you want to scroll and go to the next video cuz you're not interested yeah. you look down and you're watching this mindless maze runner, or you're watching like uh, Subway Surfer or Temple Run, and it just locks you in, and you're just listening to the top clip. You're not even watching the bottom. And I've fallen victim to them many times. It's literally like a trap. It's gonna have a pretty bad, bad effect it's in gonna ten have a years very on the youth. Negative effect. Because I remember yeah, uh, I someone someone posted a video of uh, an eight year old, and they could their iPad was it was a. Uh, a video that they were listening to some sort of like some person just cutting up pieces of clay and then subway surfers and the kids just watching it like this in front of his face and they go oh yeah this is going to have severe impacts on this kid's development for sure yeah like dude. it's so strange that's very gnarly to think about like having a screen in front of you the whole fucking time dude even me i'm addicted I'm, i'll watch and i'll be like this makes me unhappy dude like yep. uh, like it's not healthy dude fuck man that's why people, kids just need to watch our sketches, dude. They need to watch <laughs> our sketches. We will teach them what is right. Our perspective is legit. Yes. They'll laugh. They're yeah. quick hitters. It's easy and they're out. We're not going to mm -hmm. tr trick their domes. Well, it's easy to, when you don't like something, you just flick with your thumb. But they're sitting down in a theater for like these vaudeville things. It's like, you can't. You you're can not get leaving. up and walk away, but you're not going to. No, and what are you, you going to walk away for to? the next sketch? The candle that you're going to fucking <laughs> light to walk home. Yeah. And then sleep, and it's raining outside, and you have cracks in your cabin. No, fuck that. Your dude. wife smells. Yeah, yeah, your wife. Yeah, you, everyone. Everyone smells bad. <laughs> everyone has bad teeth. You yeah. have to wake up tomorrow and work. No, you're sitting there. You're maybe a little bit drunk, dude. You're warm because of body heat. <laughs> And oh, dude, getting drunk back then was probably so awesome. It's dude, probably tough. Yeah, you needed to. That's Disney. Yeah, world. yeah. It was it's probably to a task to get drunk though, because you had to drink like, you had to drink like probably what tasted like gasoline. Oh yeah. I don't think moonshine. they had anything tasty back then. I drank gasoline in high school. You fucked up, dude. I think everyone did. <laughs> I know. I was like, drinking. Did bourbon. you really drink gasoline? No, no. I, I, I had did. a buddy who used to eat dog food. Yeah. Yeah, I'm right. I was like, that's wait. interesting. <laughs> Jordan, dude, Jordan, dude, it's a party trick. And like, now we'll eat my dog's food. We're like, all right, tight. cool, cool, man. <laughs> cool. Okay, who's up next on Pong? <laughs> dude, you got to go through that type of shit, dude. dude yeah. Look, look, look. Maybe we're older guys. Is the youth fucked? I don't know. Does every generation think the youth is fucked? They probably do. Yeah, yeah, but I think. But we're they right. end up doing all right. I think we might be this right. This time we're right. This time we have like robots and stuff that are gonna yeah. fuck yeah. them. It's not like us. Well, it's, saying, it's, like, it's, it's always people it's saying robots. like their mindset is fucked. Like, oh, they don't they don't know what they're doing. They're fucked. But like, I feel like when I look at the generation below, I'm like, it's they're fucked because it's out of their control. 
that that's like, interesting. the algorithm has taken their brain hold. That's a good point. You know what I mean? Usually it's, like, it's always like, oh, they don't want to work. Or yeah. it's at least of their own volition that right. they're boned. This next generation is boned not by their own volition. Yeah, it's, they're just, they're going to be fed into the machine. They already got a name for it. What is it? I freak fuck. It's like... Aaron, what is the next generation? Aaron's a father, by the way. Aaron, your daughter's going to be fine, dude. <laughs> Don't worry, dude. Just show her this podcast, dude. You're a great dad, Aaron. I, I liked feeling young because I'm Gen Z. Yeah. I think I am. Are you guys Gen Z? I don't know. I'm technically like millennial, but I'm like, I was born in 96. Yeah. So it's like some people, it's the cutoff for being millennial. Some people, it's the cutoff for being Gen Z. So I'm, I'm a... You're I'm the forgotten, the forgotten generation. You are the forgotten generation. Yeah. Are you a- around the same age? I'm. Yeah, I'm 98. Nice. Dude, that's wild to me. 98. What were you Damn. doing? Where, where were you born? 98. I was born in 87. Oh, okay. 98. Yeah, I was fucking old, stoked dude. for Gladiator to come out. I was gonna watch <laughs> that shit, dude. I'd gone to a few Ducks games, dude. I was gonna spend the night at my buddies and play Tony Hawk Pro Skater, dude. Mm-hmm. It was gonna be fucking that's rad. Awesome. Yeah. Are you a Nintendo 64 guy? Loved it. It was my system I grew up on. I me, mean, it's the see, best. Me too, though. Really? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. So that still hit me when I was... Oh. That was my first console for a while. It's a great console. It still might be the best. The controller, dude, like oh, Mario Kart, GoldenEye. GoldenEye yeah. is the best. Bro. Bro, there's no better feeling than plugging every game you owned into the Game Shark and seeing yeah. what cheats you could do. Yes. You just had no idea, but... Yeah, you, you get to actually have fun. Dude, speaking of fun and being beasts, guys, we fucking crushed it. I really want to say, for those listening, check out the Compass Players. They informed the Second City. The Second City really was the genesis for a lot of groups. UCB, a lot of Groundlings players, a lot of um, Mad TV, um, a lot of writers and performers came out of there. Uh, you got Viola Spolin, Del Close. Look up these names if you're interested in sketch comedy and learning about the beasts. They still have the Del Close Marathon, which goes on every single year. Um, and I think, like, dude, doing an improv class or anything like that, no matter what field you're in, is going to help. Did you guys ever do improv classes? No. Oh, I that to, surprises I mean, me. I went to one audition and left in the middle of it. Wait, in a, an improv audition? To get in, a, in the improv group at UMass, yeah. I went and then left. See, that, bro, I would have done the same thing. That's why I'm glad Foosh didn't have auditions. They were making us sing. It's co- No. They, I was like, I don't want to sing. I you don't, don't do musical do... comedy until, like, yeah, no, 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 no. Dude, yeah. I remember. Let people come and hang out. I, the, this one improv group. We had made like a video freshman year of college that like won money for a prize and the improv group approached us was like, we'd love for you guys to come try out. And I went to my buddy and I was like, dude, the uh, improv group wants us to try out. And I was super excited. And he was like, yeah, that's fucking stupid. I'm not doing that. And I was like, yeah, obviously I'm here to make fun of them. And then I never went, I never, I never tried it. Dude, amazing, amazing. And who knows what would have happened. Right. Well, you guys are doing well today. You got more to come tomorrow. The future is in good hands as I see it. The The next generation will be fine. They'll be laughing. Their brains won't be poisoned by all of TikTok's algorithms or this or that or AI or any of that type of shit. How many of your boys are cornering you talking about AI these days? All of them. Yeah. All yeah, them. everyone. 5G, China, AI. <laughs> every conversation I have. I can't order a coffee without fucking doing that. <laughs> Got to jump through those hoops, dude. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, chat GT, didn't I'll take a latte, all the milk, and, uh, you know, AI, it's everywhere, yeah, for sure. Dude. I really appreciate the fuck out of you guys coming on here and coming up from the west side. Um, <clears throat> Liam Liam Kula, Will Angus, anything I missed or didn't say before we sign off? Anything you guys want to promote? I know you got Almost Friday TV. It's on YouTube. Check it out. I'm going to put the description in the episode. What else are you guys up to? What else is going on? Um, we have a podcast, Liam and I do, uh, Almost Friday, po- the Almost Friday pod. Yep. What is it called? I think that is the Almost Friday podcast. <laughs> I just don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, Which I'm going to put everyone. the description in the episode, so check it out. Yeah, and... Um, We're doing a monthly stand-up show at the office now? Yeah. Oh, well, fuck it. Oh, yeah, dude, yeah, like dude, down. You, you got to come. Have yeah. me there. I'm there. Yeah, Let's 100%. go. I would love to. Sweet. Dude, the office is in a, It's on over there. Am I allowed to say where it's at? Is that like, okay? Yeah, yeah it's, it's on Abbot It's over there on Abbot that's, Kinney, dude. You know, buy yourself a nice high-end pair of jeans and then cruise by Friday beers. <laughs> yeah. Get yourself a fucking $8 latte and cruise by Friday beers. Have a nice time. Yeah. Oh, nine dollars um, now. Do they probably? They really yeah, probably they are. are. I've been watching inflation <laughs> take it's, a shit on me. It's insanity, dude. Uh, and then great sketch comedy 
documentary to watch is Too Funny to Fail about the Dana Carvey show. Have you oh, seen it? Oh, that's I'm glad you mentioned that. Check. You haven't seen it. It's awesome because it's it's they had the greatest cast of writers ever ever assembled both Stephen Colbert mm-hmm. Stephen Carell Louis C.K. Louis, yeah Smigel, Louis. like everyone heavy hitters but fucking. the sketch they led with was trash it was they were too avant-garde and it was right after the Super Bowl they yeah they fucked they, them they were going fuck you and everyone was like six million people six million people changed the channel at once it's incredible. It's incredible. That's it's, amazing. The documentary is phenomenal. Watch it. I should watch. I yeah. need to watch that. I also want to give a shout out to um, uh, a kid sketch comedy show, Amanda Show, that actually shaped my brain a lot. Bring out the dance and lobsters. We didn't get to that, but that was uh, that was very formative for me. Yeah, the Amanda Show was formative. That's amazing. You know, Amanda hey, Bynes. Sesame Street is a, is a sketch comedy that's show. That's true. Pretty much, so yeah. that's very very formative. You know, even Mister Fucking Rogers, dude. Yeah, that guy's a beast, dude. Yeah, sweaters and shit. Um, dude, legends, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Thank um, you. Check out the descriptions. It's a pleasure all on my side. Um, awesome. Thank you to these fucking nice brewskis. Aaron, you're a beast. Questions, comments, suggestions, leave a review. It always helps the pod. Stratowilsonstrips.gmail.com. Any questions or anything you got or any um, corrections or any shit like that, let me know what fires you up, all that type of stuff. Um, appreciate you guys, dude. Liam, Will, fucking beasts. Dude, thank, thank you. you. Cheers, boys. Cheers. 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 And we'll be back for Archduke Ferdinand and Rasputin's death. Dude, yes. yes. Horny down. for that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, dude, that was so that much fun.